Hi, yeah, so I've been um, trying to detect kissing bonds uh, using ultrasound techniques. Um, kissing bonds, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, they are these interfaces where you've got two surfaces and they're in very good contact with each, with each other. And they're currently a nightmare for manufacturing because they're very hard to detect with our normal ultrasonic methods uh, because the ultrasound, the, the contemporary techniques tend to just, the, the ultrasound passes straight through these interfaces because they're in such good contact with each other. I and mean, this is limit how you can use adhesive bonds in structures. So they don't tend to be used in primary structures on aircraft. So what I'm trying to do is detect the, uh, create a method that can detect these kissing bonds so that you can use these adhesive bonds in, in more uh, cases. Uh, so we, we have the con conventional methods of uh, pulse echo and through thickness attenuation. And th these are really poor because, yeah, as I said, they just travel straight through. But um, these interfaces, they're actually um, much less stiff in tension than they are in compression because these, these kissing bonds, they don't have um, tensile, much tensile strength. They can come apart. Um, so that means that you, you see this nonlinear stress, uh, stress strain relationship here. Um, and that allows for potential nonlinear methods to pick up on this. Um, and I've spent most of my time so far uh, looking at how my method works in the bulk uh, material case. Um, but I'm, today I'm just going to try and skip on to the, the interface work that I've done. Uh, this is my method. Uh, it's not my method, I didn't come up with it. But um, they, they've been doing this about, since about the 60s, and you have these two transducers at the top, and they, they input your beams, and they, they cross over inside the material. And that region where they overlap, that's where the nonlinear interaction occurs. And if the properties of the material are right in that place, then it, they will interact with each other and create this third beam that comes out the bottom. And, um, and is detected by the array. Uh, so people have been doing this for a while, but what I've been doing that, that, uh, that is developing the technique is I've been changing the angle of these beams so that they, this interaction angle between the two beams is, can, can be varied. And also I've been changing the frequency ratio of those two beams. Um, talk to me uh, at my poster if you want to understand why, why I'm uh, doing that difference. But um, so this is the, the sample I've been working with. It's two plates of aluminium. Uh, with bolted together to create a sort of simulated kissing bond. It's a very, very loose approximation right now, but it's just the early stages of testing the method. Um, and I can change the torque on these bolts to change the interface pressure, That's something I'll come back to later. Um, so yeah, here you can see, on th these are what we're calling fingerprints. Uh, on this x-axis, you have the frequency ratio that I can alter. And on the y-axis, we have the interaction angle of the beams. Now, each of these pictures is for a particular region in a sample. We're not scanning over the samples right now, we're just looking at a single region. And the, the bright red patches are where there's a really strong nonlinear interaction going on. So you can see in the solid aluminium case, we, we get nothing in this, in this region up here. But there is something going on down here, and that's, that's actually due to the bulk uh, nonlinear properties of the material. Um, but when we have this interface that's in compression, we, we see this uh, bright spot here. And when some water got into the interface, you see it changes the, the fingerprint completely. And there's, there's loads of things, features in these, but I don't have time to go into them now. Um, one of the things I did look at was uh, when I changed the loading on these plates, this is just a single frequency ratio. So we've got interaction angle on the bottom here. You can see that as I increased the torque, the, uh, the de degree of mixing came down. So there was less of this nonlinearity. Um, uh, so, so less um, signal was seen. Uh, in, so I've been doing uh, FE modeling of bulk material to try and really get a good understanding of that to form the foundation of uh, my work. Uh, I've been doing some work in composites. That's still very much in the early stages. Uh, this is a rather messy fingerprint here from a composite. Um, and next stages would be doing more, really developing that, that composite work. Um, and looking for areas in these fingerprints that are characteristic of certain material properties um, or interface properties or anything like that. Uh, and in, in the future, this method could be developed because currently these fingerprints take hours to, uh, to gather. But if we used arrays for pulse generation, we can um, quickly change the angles of interaction and things like that, so reducing it to a much more reasonable time scale. Um, so I'd like to thank my, my supervisor, Dr. Anthony, Anthony uh, Coxford, um, research assistant Dr. Dr. Jack Potter, and the EPRC for funding. Thanks. <laughs>